Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're going to move a little bit further down the uh, road here and look at boost with turbo timing and uh, see what uh, we can find out about that. Uh, so for this series of tests, I'm going to use uh, my Mini Pro Dyno. Uh, I feel a lot more comfortable having the spinning flywheel geared at 2 to 1 and spinning inside a nice solid enclosure because uh, RPMs can uh, get a little bit high when you start playing around with uh, turbo and boost. Um, so what are we going to try and answer here? Well, we're going to look at total timing, total boost plus turbo timing. Uh, when should you start run, when should you turn on turbo? Um, how much turbo and uh, how much boost in relationship to that? So doing that, you can get these kind of wacky looking curves. And uh, we're going to talk a bit about that now. So <clears throat> I've already preloaded these runs uh, in RC Crew Chief. And I'm just going to turn and do this sequentially. It'll make things a little easier to understand. Okay, so our baseline for comparison, this is the 20 degree timing on a uh, R1 Works 17.5 V16. Uh, so, you know, not that you would ever run 20 degrees of uh, timing in blinky mode. It gives us a kind of reference to see what we're doing to the performance. So the next curve is with the same motor. Uh, and again, everything is identical here, as close as I can get it, um, with 20 degrees of boost. So we've got 20 degrees of can timing plus 20 degrees of boost. So now let's start adding turbo. So here comes turbo. We're going to do 10 degrees of turbo, and we're going to start it at 15,000 RPM. So there you go. You can see our two power lines overlap almost identically until we get to our 15,000 RPM point, and then we get this carbuncle sticking out of the side here. Um, that's when the turbo kicks in. So you can see the shape of the uh, power graph changes quite dramatically. Um, Next, let's have a look at, well, actually, before I do that, I want to show you one other thing. Uh, when you kick in your turbo, we look at our current graphs. So this is the current versus RPM. You can see here the jump. So this is what happens when you kick into turbo. You start drawing significantly more current. In this case, we're drawing uh, about 7 roughly 7 amps more current with 10 degrees of boost, or sorry, 10 degrees of, of turbo. Um, so the last one I've got in this series is 20 degrees of turbo. So now our total timing is 60 degrees. So you can see our little carbuncle here has grown somewhat. Uh, kind of looks like a mountain range. Um, not exactly the ideal uh, shape for a power curve or a torque curve, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, you can see again our current has increased again even more. So now we're, our minimum current is now out at about 20 amps. So it's jumped about another 7 amps by adding another 10 degrees of uh, turbo. So let's just have a look at our torque curves and you can see what happens there. So same thing, current and torque are basically related 100%. So the more current you apply, the more torque you get. So you can see the exact same shapes uh, are replicated here in the torque curves. So we get a big boost in torque. Um, the thing you have to ask yourself is, does this peak out here and this peak in here make a lot of sense? Let's just turn these other guys off. Uh, and the answer to that, in my opinion, I've never tried it, but I would say no. Uh, because you're going to get good acceleration, good power here, and then you're going to start falling off, and then all of a sudden you're going to get a kick in the pants, and it's going to take off again, uh, which may not be an ideal situation. So I would say you want to try and move this more towards this peak so you can get it into a, a more familiar-looking curve. It's also going to make our torque curve look a lot nicer, too. So I'm going to go away for a second here, and I'll be right back, and I'll show you what happens as we start changing the uh, uh, start RPM for our turbo. Okay, back. Um, loaded a couple other runs in. So 
this was the run with uh, 20 boost and uh, 20 turbo uh, and the turbo kicking in at 15,000 RPM. So what I did is I ran a couple other cases, uh, one with the turbo kicking in at 12,000 RPM and one at 10. So let's see what happens. So at 12,000 RPM, you can see we've got rid of our little mountain valley here and we're getting something that looks a little bit more consistent. Um, we can go one step further and lower it down to 10,000 RPM. And now we've got something that's more traditional looking in terms of what a, a boost or what a, a power graph looks like for a brushless motor. And you can see up here at the high end, nothing has changed. Everything stays the same. Uh, it's just a fact of, of how that boost or turbo is applied and how smoothly it's going to come in. So if we look at our torque curve, let me just turn some of these guys off here. Let's turn off the... So this is the one with the uh, turbo kicking in at 12,000 RPM. And this one is with it kicking in at 10,000 RPM. So you can see here with the 12,000, we get a little bit of dip in torque, and then it comes back up. With the 10,000, it's much more continuous, much smoother application. So if I was uh, going to go out and try this, which I may very well do, um, I'd be starting with that sort of a situation. Uh, I'd have 20 degrees of boost and 20 degrees of turbo, uh, and then take it out and see what it does. It should be fairly nice and smooth, uh, not jumpy, where all of a sudden you get a big kick just because the, uh, the turbo's kicked in. Okay, uh, next I want to look at uh, what it does to the whole thing when we add more turbo, or sorry, add more boost. So I'm just going to load in another one here without going away. So we've got, uh, that's it there, 20. So this is going to have 30 degrees of boost and the same turbo settings. So turbo kicks in at 10,000 RPM and the uh, uh, boost is kicked in between 2 and 12,000 RPM. So I'm just going to overwrite that one. <clears throat> and now let's see what we've got. Why is that not coming up? Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to close this and open it again because it doesn't have the new stuff loaded. So there's our, our new curve, and this was our best of the rest, which was file 3. So you can see adding the 30 degrees of boost, we get significantly better uh, graph, and more power, uh, more RPM, everything. Uh, the other thing we get is a lot more current. So you can see here this one is now drawing almost 30 amps of current at no load. Um, versus 20 amps. So it's cost us another 10 amps in uh, in current draw to gain that additional performance. Uh, whether you can manage that with uh, cooling fans and so on is not a question I can answer because I've never tried it. So there you go. Uh, i got one more thing I want to show you and I'll be right back. Okay, the last thing I wanted to uh, look at here was all right, we've got 20 degrees of uh, can timing, 30 degrees of boost, and 20 degrees of turbo. So the total of that is 70 degrees. Uh, what's the difference between that and 20 degrees of can timing and 50 degrees of boost? So ran that test, and there it is. So you can see uh, the main difference you can see here is in the lower RPM range because we're operating uh, with the turbo version, uh, we're operating with 50 degrees of uh, timing essentially until we kick in the turbo, then we bump up to the 70 degree total that we've got here, and then the curves are essentially identical. Uh, <coughs> the reason between these two curves are not 100% identical is uh, the battery, um, I probably should have recharged the battery to 
to get the voltage so that they would be the same. Uh, I'm sure if I did that, uh, if I just look at the voltage here, uh, 25,000 RPM, you can see here I got 7.45 uh, in the uh, one with turbo, and I only got 7.38. So I got a little difference in the voltage, and that's the reason for the difference between those two curves. All right, um, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Uh, hope this has given you guys maybe a little bit more insight into what's going on. Uh, I know I've learned something. I uh, <clears throat> wish I had this kind of information 10 years ago. Uh, but anyways, I've got it now. So sharing it with you guys, hopefully it's going to help you when you're playing around with your ESC settings to really understand what you're doing and what it's doing to the motor. Uh, so just as a couple of quick takeaways is your, uh, when you get up into the really high timing settings, like I was showing that there were 70 degrees, <laughs> you get high current draw and you're going to have to manage your temperatures. Uh, I don't even know whether it's possible to manage them that much. If you've got, um, uh, 30 degrees or sorry, 30 amps of current draw, no load. Uh, that's a lot of, uh, uh, dissipation in the coils or in the windings in the motor. So, you know, that's going to have to be managed. Um, your turbo trigger. Uh, what I've been doing in all this is I've been using an RPM trigger. So once the boost range has completed, you probably want to trigger your turbo very near the end of the boost or even maybe slightly before the end of the boost range. Um, you could also include the full throttle requirement as well. Uh, so that it doesn't kick in, you know, midway through a corner. Uh, but that's something that you'd have to play with on track. Now, if you're using turbo only, um, I would only consider using that for a very low wind motor. And in that condition, I would probably just trigger it with full throttle application. Uh, there wouldn't be much point in, in looking at applying it at a, at a different RPM. Anyways, that's it. Hope that uh, gives you guys uh, some more information to use.